Okay, today we're going to talk about solving exponential and log equations. And um, our first one is e to the x equals 72. And so we're wanting to get to x. And the way we get to x is by using the inverse of this exponential, which is a log. And since it's base e, that would be natural log. So I'm going to natural log both sides. So natural log e to the x equals natural log 72. And then what happens is natural log and e go to 1. They cancel each other out. And you think about moving the x to the front um, or bringing it down. Um, however you want to think about it. There's different ways of thinking about it. But a lot of you probably want to think about canceling it out, um, which is because they're inverses. Um, so we have x equals the natural log of 72. And there are some cases that in a multiple choice situation you see it written like this. And then there are other cases where you have have it typed into your calculator and get a decimal. In this case that would be 4.27. If you need to practice typing that in, pause and make sure you get that same answer. For example 2, um, we have to get rid of this 3 first. We have to get down to the exponential equal to whatever so you want to divide by 3 to begin with, and then you have 2 to the x equals 14. And we're kind of in the same situation as we were here, except our base is not e, it's 2. Um, so you can actually log or natural log both sides, it still works. Uh, it just won't cancel out like it did over here because it doesn't have that inverse. Um, or you can use a log base 2 and make it cancel out whatever work works for you. I'm going to go with the same process every time. I'm just going to use natural log. So I'm going to natural log 2 to the x and so natural log 14. And then what you want to think of is that power rule if you did it this way, that power rule of moving the x to the front and getting natural log of 2 without the exponent and then you finally divide by the natural log of 2. So I have natural log 14 divided by the natural log of 2. And if I type that in, I get 3.8. Now, if you like that and you want to go with that, just stay here. If you want to see what I was talking about a minute ago with the log base 2, I'm going to come over here and show you another way to do it. And feel free to fast forward if you already like this way. The log base 2 would be log base 2 in both sides because my base is 2. So I have that for each. And over here, these are now inverses, a log and an exponential of the same thing. So think of it as canceling and moving the x to the front or bringing the x down. And then you have log base 2 of 14, which makes you use your change of base rule, which would be log 14 over log 2. You would still get that same decimal answer, but notice how these are the same, because we talked about, um, that was supposed to be natural log, we talked about how you could do natural log or regular log in your calculator. Okay, for the next two examples, I wanted to do um, exponential equations that were a little more complicated. You had to get uh, a few things moved before you can log or natural log both sides. So for the first one, I need to get this e to the 2x by itself. So I need to add 3. So I'd have 4e to the 2x equals 5. And then divide by 4. So e to the 2x equals 5. 5 fourths. And I'm going to leave it like that because you know I like my fractions. So now I want to get rid of the e and uh, the inverse of that would be the natural log. So natural log of e to the 2x and if I natural log one side I have to natural log the other. So I'm doing the natural log of 5 fourths. And on this side they'll cancel. You can move the exponent down. So 2x will equal natural log of 5 fourths and then divide by 2. So x would be the natural log of 5 fourths divided by 2, which as a decimal is decimal 11. 
The next example, again, I have a couple things to get rid of, and I have a little bit more uh, of an involved exponent to deal with. So I still want to get this part by itself first, and I need to add 4 to do that. <clears throat> Just one moment. Okay, add 4, I get 2 times 3 to the 2x minus 5 equals 15. And then I'm going to divide by 2. And again, I, I have something that doesn't go in equally. So you can use a decimal, but you know, I like my fractions. So 15 over 2. Now, I can do this problem uh, with natural logging both sides, or I can do it with log base 3 if you liked that second option that I gave on number 2. So whichever way, you should still end up with the same answer. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, natural log both sides. So natural log of 3 to the 2x minus 5 equals the natural log of 15 over 2. And I'm going to move the exponent to the front. When I move it to the front, I'm going to put it in parentheses because it is it has a plus or a minus. It's a bigger um, amount of things. It's not so simple as before. I want to make sure I get everything right. So 2x minus 5 times the natural log of 3 equals the natural log of 15 over 2. You have to keep in mind that this natural log of 3 and the natural log of 15 over 2 are both uh, just numbers. They're decimals if you pl plug them into your calculator. So it's this times a number equals a number. So I'm going to divide by that so I can get the 2x minus 5 by itself. So I have the natural log of 15 over 2 over the natural log of 3. And uh, if you want to go ahead and plug that in, it might be easier to get a decimal at this point. And I get 1.83. Add 5. You get 6.83. And divide by 2. You get 3.415. Okay, now I'm going to move on to log equations. And again, we're trying to get x by itself, so we're going to do the inverse of what we have. So the inverse of natural log is e. So what you're really doing is raising e to the power that each side was is going to become a power. Uh, so I have e to the natural log x equals e to the negative 8. And in that case, the e and the natural log are going to cancel, and I get x equals e to the negative 8. And again, in a multiple choice situation, you might see this, or you might see 1 over e to the 8th, or you might see the decimal, which if you plug this in your calculator, this is going to be a small number, so it's going to give it to you in scientific notation. 3.35 times 10 to the negative 4th. So in your calculator, try that out and see what that looks like, because they use e negative 4 instead of times 10. Uh, but that means scientific notation, and that's the power. For number 6, you have two natural logs, so you need to get them together. And this is why we learned those properties. So a minus was uh, originally division, so you can back that up and combine that to the natural log of 5 over x. And now that the problem has the natural log part by itself, you can e both sides. So I'm going to have e to the natural log of 5 over x equals e to the 0. Well, here, these are going to cancel. I'm going to have 5 over x. And then if you'll remember, anything to the 0 power is 1. So this is a little bit different type of situation. We get a 1 over here. Now, if I multiply by x, I get 5 equals x. Okay, now we have example 7, and sometimes if you look at it, it's not as complicated as it looks. Um, both of these have log base 3 on each side, and so we've had some simple ones where we did them in our head. Now we just have equations. If you have log base 3 of this equals log base 3 of this, it should make sense um, that this has to equal this, because both sides have to have the same outcome. And so I can just take um, what these are and say 5x minus 1 equals x plus 7. Because again, these have to be equal. You don't have to worry about the log base 3 if it's on both sides. 
Um, they can make them more complicated, so be careful. Make sure what you're doing is legal. All right, on this one, I'm just down to an equation. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. I get 4x minus 1 equals 7. Add 1. 4x is going to equal 8. Divide by 4. x is going to equal 2. All right, then we move on to um, problem number 8. This is one that just has a natural log, one natural log, but I have this other stuff to get rid of. This would be a good one if you wanted to pause and try it by yourself before you saw my work uh, to see if you would get it. All right, uh, the first step would be to subtract the 5. Uh, it's by itself up here. Normally, you guys like it back here with the plus 5 behind the natural log, but it's not always the case that they'll put it there. Here's a positive 5, so I need to subtract it. So 2 natural log x equals 4 minus 5 would be negative 1. And then I divide by 2, and I get the natural log of x equals negative 1 half. And I have the natural log by itself, so now I can E both sides. So it becomes a power over here and a power over here. These are going to cancel, and that brings the exponent down. So x is going to equal E to the negative 1 half which would mean it's on the bottom of a fraction and is a square root, if you're looking at multiple choice scenarios with that. As a decimal, it's about 6 or 0 0.606. Okay, for example 9, uh, again, I made it a very complicated looking one, but everything's log base 3. You'll notice that on this side we have two log base 3s, and they're separated with a minus. That means that I can back it up and combine it using the properties from the other day, and this will be the quotient one. So I'm going to have log base 3 of 5x plus 13 on top of 6. On this side, it's going to be log base 3 of 3x. I haven't messed with it any. This now should remind you of what we did in number 7. Uh, both sides have log base 3 by themselves with nothing added or multiplied onto them. And what they are taking the log of is it has to be equal because they're both log base 3. So I can get rid of the log base 3s now and say 5x plus 13 over 6 is going to equal 3x. And then I just go about solving that. Most of you want to get rid of that fraction first, so I'm going to multiply by 6. 5x plus 13 would equal 6 times 3x, which would be 18x. I can subtract the 5x, so 18x minus 5x would be 13x. And then if I divide by 13, 13 divided by 13 is 1, so x would equal 1 in this case. Okay, for our last example, um, I'm using ones that have uh, no base shown, which hopefully you remember uh, means that it's base 10, and we need to combine those. This would be another one where you might want to pause and try and see how far you can get without me. Um, if not, you can just listen and move on. So here we have two logs. They're separated by a plus. That means I can back them up as a multiplication. So I'm going to rewrite it as log of x times x minus 9. And then to get rid of this, it's base 10. So I can do one of two things. Uh, either one will get me basically to the next line the same way. You can think of putting it in exponential form, which would be 10 to the power of 1 equals x times x minus 9. Or you can think of 10 both sides to cancel that. I think I will do the exponential form just to remind you of how that goes. So your imaginary base is 10 here. 10 to the first power will equal x times whoops, x times x minus 9. Now if you distribute here 10 to the first power is 10. If you distribute x squared minus 9x, you're stuck with. You should recognize at this point that this is a quadratic because you have x squared and x. That means you need to get it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract the 10 and have the x squared minus 9x minus 10. 
and then you have to uh, factor it or use quadratic formula. This one will obviously factor. Um, you x factor it. And you're asking the question what multiplies to give us 10 and adds to give us a negative 9. And so that would be a negative 10 and a positive 1. Then you go to solving those. So set them equal to 0 separately. x minus 10 equals 0. x plus 1 equals 0. Add the 10. x equals 10. Subtract the 1. x equals negative 1. Now, this one actually comes out a little differently than any of the other problems that we've come up against because if you'll remember, you can't take the log of a negative number. 10 is fine. If I put 10 back in the original problem, I could find the log of 10 and I could find the log of 10 minus 9 because both of those would end up with positives. However, if I put the negative 1 back in, I cannot find the log of negative 1 because the log graph does not exist in the negatives. It's all into the positive domain. So this is actually an extraneous solution. Extraneous solution. Let me write that down for you. That means it is a answer that you can get by doing the work that doesn't really work in the problem if you plug it back in. Your only answer in this one is 10. And again, this one is considered an extraneous solution, so it's not a real solution of this problem. And they could put stuff like that on your test to confuse you. All right, this is the end of the notes. Uh, you can see me for your work.